Hey everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna go over creating light shows in the arrangement view. We're gonna learn how to use MIDI clips and how to draw light effects for the Launchpad. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna switch over to arrangement mode here. We're gonna be drawing our lights into MIDI clips that are gonna be located on the arrangement part of the MIDI track. We can insert a MIDI clip. I've talked about this a while ago in the previous episode, but this time I'm going to dive really deep into it and show you how to use this editor. So I'm going to switch into user one mode here so that I can send my button presses over to the MIDI track and I can receive light feedback from the track. Uh, first, we need to set up the tracks inputs and outputs. This little section here, this describes the tracks input and output. If you've got only one launchpad, you can use all ends. If you've got multiple, you should select the launchpad you want to use here. Uh, make sure the track is armed so that it can receive our button presses, like that. And now for the output part, there's no all outs option. Select your launch pad, and then make sure you select channel 6. That should be the factory default. And now if you try to press the button, you'll see it lights up. Alright, time to go back to our media clip. The horizontal space here, what you would call an x-axis, represents time. So you can use that to tell when uh, a light shows up, when it goes away, when it changes the color. And the vertical y-axis represent the keys. This is displayed as a piano roll, but to us it'll just map to the launch pad in the same button order we have in the drum rack. You can actually see that these names correspond. So if I go and press C sharp 1, which is this one, I can see it lights up here and it also lights up here. You can easily find which key you need by just holding it down and then it'll turn red on the left side. So let's learn how we can actually draw some light effects inside of this view. One way is to just double click on an empty space. So it's gonna turn the light on at this button for this long. So if you go ahead and try to play it in the arrangement, we're gonna see a light turns yellow for the duration of the note. Shorten it, now it's really short, or we can make it really long. Um, so now we can draw as many as we like. So let's say I want to draw some kind of movement here. So I can just do that. Just double click on empty spaces. That gives me a super basic movement. Uh, you can remove them by just selecting them and pressing delete. When you selected these notes, you can move them around while holding control. This will make duplicates of them. This lets you make light effects like this really quickly. Ones that have lots of repetitions. You can also move them up or down. So let's select all of this. Let's move it up, like that. Now I got something that moves, like, columns moving over. You can also move them around with the left and right keys on your keyboard. I find this a lot easier to do, a lot more practical. There we go, we have a first sort of effect going on. But working with it like this is kind of tedious, so I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Make sure this here button is turned on. Uh, when this button is turned on, you can press these buttons and then draw notes at that position. So now instead of doing all of that, I can just hold this button down. And now I'm pressing right arrow on my keyboard. And this lets me draw the note that I'm holding. I can use left arrow to get rid of it or to just make it shorter if I've gone too long. So now I can just press each key I want and then draw it in. And this gives us the same effect. Now you can like go ahead and duplicate them like you did earlier. Or we could have just made that in the first place. So you can hold multiple buttons down as well, just like that. And you get the same effect. I personally find this a lot easier to work with, especially if you're drawing some weird patterns that go in different directions. So now you might be wondering how color works on it. So far we've only had a orange yellowish light that doesn't look too appealing. It looks very weak and plain. Let's draw a simple effect here that goes like this, like that. And now let's try to apply color to it. You basically have to use this here section that's below the actual notes. These represent the notes that are stacked here on top. The height of this column represents the color of the note. So you can set this to any desired value and it'll give you a color. So let's change it up. There we go. We get some nice colors. There's not an actual way to directly input a number, so you're gonna have to settle with selecting them and then moving them around like this. It's very tedious, but there's not really a better method to do it. Another way is to select the notes, hold Alt down, and then you can drag it like this. But I prefer dragging this head directly. To modify the duration of a light effect, you can also select all of your notes and then drag them with the stretch marker here. This lets you make a light effect 
uh, faster or slower collectively really easily. Now I'll talk about some neat functions we can find down here. The most useful ones will be double tempo, half tempo, reverse notes, and invert notes. I'm gonna go over each of these individually. So first you wanna select the notes you want to apply the effect on, and now you can click either of these buttons to apply that effect to the selected note region. So if I select divide by two or double tempo, it makes uh, the selected region exactly twice as fast. Or by playing at half tempo or times two, it makes them exactly twice as slow. Clicking on reverse notes is going to reverse your light effect. If I reverse it, you can see it flips horizontally. And now, instead of the effect going outwards on the launch pad, it decides to go inwards. You can also reverse that back. If you select invert, however, it flips them vertically. And most of the time, that will kind of trash your light effect on the launch pad. But you can usually fix that by moving the notes a slight bit upwards or downwards, depending on where your light effect is and now you've successfully inverted the light effect. You can combine reversing and inverting to create something like that. And now I can use that to fulfill the effect we had before. So I'm gonna duplicate this now by pressing Control D. And I'm gonna reverse it and inverse it. Now I'm just gonna connect these here, move it back to the left. And I've completed the missing portion of the light effect. Now if I duplicate that again and invert this, now I can put it at this region below and now I get a much nicer looking light effect. Do that one more time. This time if we invert it, it's already symmetrical. So there's no reason to invert it anymore. Now put it at the far left side. Now we get a really interesting light effect that spans across the whole launch pad. You can use this method to create a whole plethora of different effects. It's really versatile and powerful. Most of the lights you create this way aren't going to be limited technically. They're going to be limited by your own creativity. The only thing you could have issues with is your own imagination and trying to come up with ideas for these kinds of light effects. Alright, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye.